Hello. Oh, uh, everybody's just coming in. We're just going to wait for more people to come in. Hopefully, you can see our screen. Can you see that still, Lou and B? Can you go like that? Yeah, good, good, everyone. Fantastic. Hello, hi, welcome, everybody. We're just going to wait for a few more people to come through and come in uh, before we start. So if you want to at all unmute your mics, you can say hello or put your cameras on. We would love to see you. Hello. Hello. Oh, look, there's people doing it. Hi. I always think I'm talking to a black screen. It's really quite uh, strange. Oh, there's more people. Hi. Hello. Lots of people. Hello, everybody. You don't have to keep the camera on all the way through, but if you want to say hello and put your camera on now, you can. Um, and if you want to unmute, you can say hello too and have a chat. Um, there's quite a few more people coming through. We're just going to wait. from South Africa. I'm the blonde that doesn't know what to do ever. <laughs> oh, where? Is, oh, I can't find you now. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, Are you watching from, from South Africa now? I am. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. amazing. Ah, how did you find <laughs> us? Um, I've been trying to reinvent myself on Instagram, so um, I've been, you know, on it a lot. And um, uh, my site, my thing is called Healthfully Balanced, so it brings up all these things. And I'm also looking to maybe join some sort of collect collective um, group. Wow. So That's yeah, great. so uh, you found it. I miss and it. I love I love Ali. I mean, I love yeah. her posts. They're gorgeous. Ah, oh, so you found really that. Really inspiring. Too. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Oh, I love Ali. I find when I speak to, she's, she's on mute now, that's why you can unmute yourself, Ali, if you want to talk. I find that whenever I see Ali or speak to Ali, she's always like so happy and it makes me feel happy and maybe appreciate my life better. You know, you're really, you're really positive. No, yeah. you're, not, you're not talking about the ripple effect there, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got a child here. Hold on. That's right. I've just had to sort out my dog. She's, the, everybody's in different rooms in our house. We've got two boys studying upstairs. James is in the basement studying. I'm in here and we're all trying to be really quiet and the dog doesn't know which room to go in. So she's just sat in the hall barking. <laughs> it's like, shh. I've got children screaming. Right, how are we doing? So we've got, most people are here. Hot, I'm really sorry about this. I'm just gonna go and tell my child to be quiet. one of our problems isn't it working from home at the moment trying to juggle everything it's just not easy <laughs> i'm back right so uh shall i start we got most people in i think so other people will join so for all of you that don't know uh who we all are my name is caroline and we've got b on here as well who's under the Ent enterprise collective she's waving and we've also got lou on there as well and they are going to be letting people in that are arriving uh, later on and they're also going to be muting people and unmuting people they're also going to be monitoring the chat uh, so if you've got any questions at all that you want to ask ali throughout the whole of the talk make sure you um, write them in the chat or you can ask them afterwards. So what we like to do on our webinars is at the very end um, Ali will finish her talk and then it will be open to you to ask questions. So if you do want to unmic your um, mic you can then unmic it, that's the copy machine now, sorry about this, um, and you can speak to Ali yourself. If you'd rather not do that that's absolutely fine as well, you can just type it in the chat and we will ask the questions for you, just so you know. So and now I'm just gonna look at my notes of what I'm going to say. We will um, mute everybody when they come in, and so you, don't, you, but you can keep your cameras on. So if you want to keep them on, you can. If you'd rather switch them off, sometimes I have a child coming in, so I switch my things off and on all throughout it. So do whatever's, whatever you want to do. Um, the other thing I was gonna mention about was our webinars. Um, so we, we have run a series of webinars so far and each of the webinars at the moment are £10. What we've decided to do is actually just close that. So it will just be for members to watch it live from July. We've got quite a few members now and we really um, love our members and we want to make it really special for our members. So we've decided that what we will do is just have the live webinars that we do, tend to do them on a Friday. They might change in the future. They will just be for our members. And then afterwards, people can watch them and pay for them in separately if they would like to. So the webinars that we've got had in the past over the last month have been um, Sophie from The Joyful Coach, 
uh, Becky from Wrapped, Caitlin from Beyond the Logo, we've had Paula that did Pinterest, uh, Kay was last week and she did tips on how to do the uh, take perfect photographs. We've got some really good ones coming up. And the reason why they're so broad is because we have a massive audience of different businesses that range from like florists to uh, photographers to copywriters to um, candle makers, they're the most random bunch of people that all need to learn and all need to learn these things. So we've decided that what we would do is have a range of them that you can pick and choose on what you want to do basically. Um, so that's why it's a bit random, but hopefully you will find something there that you would like. So the membership at the moment is 18 pounds a month and you will then get to watch any of those webinars that we've already done and webinars that we're going to be doing in the future. Um, and also there are other things on there. We've got a online community, which is just private. Um, it's a Facebook private group where you can go on. And we've also got different downloadable things that we're working on. The other thing that we've just relaunched is our e-course. Um, so our e-course is out on the 23rd. Let me get that date right. Yes, I've got it right. Uh, of June. And we did, we ran it last month. And to be honest, it was just going to be a one-off. And it was such a success. Everybody really enjoyed it. And the feedback we've had was amazing. So we've decided to rerun it again. So we did a post yesterday on it. And we will be talking a lot more about it after this. Uh, but we've been running up for Ali's thing. So we've been concentrating on that. But after this, we'll be talking about it. If you want to know any more information, though, please feel free to send us an email or a DM and we will get back to you. But it is open again on the 23rd and we would love to see more of you there so please tell all your friends about it uh, because I think the people that have done it have really really enjoyed it and that's the feedback we've had so far which has been great so I think that's all my little admin bits I think anything else they're probably going to message me I bet you're messaging me telling me I've forgotten something I'll add it in on the end so what I'm going to do now is hand you over to Ali who's here in the beautiful blue dress in the sunshine shining on her she can unmute herself Ali I think I'm I think I must have like known you for a while but not really known you and you came to a few of our events I think only a, the last few really didn't you two. I've only been to two yeah the last two events and um, she, as I've said, when, whenever you meet Ali, you just feel so happy and positive, especially when you come away from her. She's such a, a lovely person. Uh, and I feel like we're going to learn so much from this. I'm going to hand you over now to Ali and I will come back at the end and I'm going to unmute myself or mute myself, I should say. Right, here we go. Over to Ali. Bye bye. <laughs> Carrie, thank you so much. That was such a lovely introduction. And yeah, I've only been to two of well it started off as the york insta meet and then obviously it's had a rebrand then called the enterprise collective and it's just been such a joy to be part of what you guys are creating and it's helped me no end in my business as well but also just from a personal level just been so lovely to make so many really gorgeous new friends and lovely people who are part of this and i'm so excited for you and what's happening for you guys as well because not, it used to be such a physical thing and now it's gone you've gone global you're in south africa oh my god if that's called a celebration tonight i'm going for it you need to do that it's just just so so good anyway thank you carrie and welcome to everybody who is here on the webinar today and also welcome to anybody who's watching this as a replay as well and i'm just going to start off by way of a little bit of an introduction about me and I know that there's probably some people watching who know me already so you've heard it all before but I'm gonna to have to repeat it for people who don't but I'm the founder of Heal Yourself Happy I'm a health and happiness coach and I help predominantly I help people who um, are highly purposeful motivated people who've taken a little bit of a life hit through maybe a life trauma that stopped them in their tracks or they're facing particularly challenging times and they're feeling something that they've not really felt before. Often they come to me because they're feeling really low, really lacking in energy. They're feeling rejected. They're in pain. They just don't really know what's happened to them. They don't know how to find a way forward. They often say to me, they want to go back to how they were. But what I help them see is actually, you need to move forward. Take the bits of what you want from your previous life and make it better in the future. And so I help them go on this journey of self-discovery and healing. And I help them go back into their lives full of energy, full of light, full of love, full of laughter, and they feel so much better. One of my gorgeous clients, and, and I think she's watching today actually, 
um, she referred to me as a fixer of hearts and she said, Ali, you fixed my heart. She said, my, when I came to see you, my heart was broken into pieces. My, my relationship had broken down. I left my career. I didn't know who I was. I was grieving the death of my parents. I was broken and you helped me fix my heart back and make it whole again so that I could go back out into life. And I feel like me again. I feel like I've got my soul back. And just her hearing that story back to me just suddenly clicked with me that that's actually what I do. I, I help people fix themselves. And I love that. So I'm a health coach. I trained um, as a health coach through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Um, I am a meditation tutor, a mindfulness coach. I'm a qualified life coach, which makes me, I think, a happiness coach because I can help people be happy in all areas of their life. I'm a mentor to other people who are setting up in their own business. I'm an entrepreneur. I've set up my own business. I've set up previous businesses before. I'm very left and right brained. I'm really creative just as much as I love analysis. Yes, I was telling the girls yesterday when we had a quick catch up that um, Willie, my youngest son, was doing algebra and I love algebra and I totally forgot that I was meant to be teaching him and I did his whole worksheet. So I'm really left and right brained and also really excitingly, I just put this on the bottom because I can't believe I forgot it, but I'm actually a published author. In lockdown, I got my book in print. I've written loads of things for articles for magazines and and um, lots of other things, but um, somebody asked me to contribute to a book, so I'm actually in print. So I've one of my dreams came true in lockdown. How strange is that? So that's me from a professional level. On a more personal level, I've got two boys, Tom and Willie. My husband is James. We started dating when we were 19. We've got two animals, a dog and a cat. At the moment, I'm predominantly a teacher in tech support, like I'm sure a lot of people are. My, my responsibilities as a chef, a cook, a pot washer, a laundry lady, a housekeeper, a cleaner, all of that has magnified. Um, I'm also responsible for all the social in our house and booking the holidays. I do the school runs and I'm always the loudest and the biggest cheerleader on the sidelines when my boys play. So that's a little bit about me um, on a personal level, but also, oh, hang on, what's happened? I can't move my slide along. Why can't I? Oh, there we go. Sorry, just a bit of a tech issue. But I couldn't really not say anything about my extended family at the moment, who I'm sure a lot of people feel the same, hugely missing. My sister on the top left there and my sister-in-law on the bottom right, they're my two best friends. I've got lots of nieces and nephews. I've got lots of godchildren because I've got so many gorgeous, gorgeous friends. And there is my beautiful dad at the bottom there. He is the biggest inspiration to me and is an absolute legend. So that is me in terms of why I'm coming to speak to you. So you know a little bit of background about me, but this webinar really is today, creating your own ripple effect of success. It's really for anybody who, well, I suppose if I, if I think about all of the people who've been coming to me recently, all the people who've been joining my private online community have to answer a few questions before they're allowed to enter. And what I'm seeing is some common themes and People are coming in because they're not feeling particularly successful in their work or in their career or even in their life. At the beginning of the year, they kind of set out some goals in 2020. 2020 was going to be the year and it has not played out the way that they expected it to. And so this is for the, the people who are, are, are struggling with that, not feeling particularly successful at the moment. Um, what I'm helping people do through today's webinar is for anybody who's really feeling really demotivated, if they're feeling low on energy, if they're, they're just really feeling apathetic, you know, just, oh, what's the point? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, help you see that there is one. It's for anybody really who is feeling that they're particularly lacking in love, in friendship, if you're missing connections, you know, that in terms of the love piece, it's quite tricky. You know, if you're in a relationship and you're in a house, then it's putting immense pressure on your relationships by being with each other all the time. But also if you're separated, that's also really hard in terms of if you're not living together, it's putting an awful lot of pressure on love and it can make, make you feel like you're missing it and you're missing your friends and missing that real connection of physical connection. You know, I can't wait to hug people again. I'm finding it very strange you have to hug yourself a lot. Um, it's for anybody and lots of people are coming in who, this has been a real time slowing down for many, or you know, if you've been furloughed or made, been made redundant, then this is a time of real evaluation and people aren't really sure where they are, where they're going or what they want to do. And I hope to do through this webinar is give you some ideas of what you can do so you can empower yourself to take you to go forward. I've also been seeing an awful lot of people thinking now, you know, with all this time and you know, time with themselves that they're feeling totally unworthy there's a lot of feeling of that, of unworthy of success, unworthy of love, and, and unworthy of really living a, a full life. And I want to help 
change that story for you and show that you really, really are worthy of all of these success and that you, you can build your self-esteem and go back out there. And then you can create this ripple effect and, and create your own success. So when people come to me with a, those sorts of feelings, what, what I really feel, and I suppose I would diagnose, is that you've lost a sense of yourself in your life. You've lost your sense of purpose. You've forgotten what your passion is. You've forgotten what your desires and your goals and your dreams are. And it's, and it's understandable. And, and, and I've been there myself in terms of you've gone through life and, you, and particularly as women, and I imagine there's a lot of women on here, we always nurture everybody else first. We put ourselves last. We're, we're making sure that everybody else is okay. We're people pleasing everybody else. We're living out the expectations of everybody else who has on us, whether that be a partner or a parent. We're, we're living out their expectations or we're trying to live out what we feel we should be rather than actually just allowing ourselves to be. So what I want to try and do over the course of the next 40 minutes is really take you on a journey to refine you and determine this way that you can put yourself back in your life and then help alleviate all of those feelings that I was just, you just, just talking about. Now, before you say, oh, I don't have time, what I want to say is the things that I'm going to share with you today is, is, find, is helping you find a way to put you back in your life without disrupting or ignoring everybody else in your life. But actually by focusing on you, you're going to be in so much better service to everybody else, whether that be your children, your partner, your parents, your work. By putting yourself first, you make sure that you are being in the best possible position that you can to look after everybody else. But you need to look after yourself first. And that's what the ripple is. It's about putting you, putting you first. So many people come to me as well, or they feel that they just need a quick fix. What did I read this morning? I've written it down, sorry, hang on. I wrote it down, I just wrote it down in my notes. Oh yeah, fast food joy. They want fast food joy, they want fast food fix. It's something you want it now, you want it immediately. And when people come and work with me, that's what they're often looking for. I just want you to take the pain away. I just want you to, you know, fix me, fix me now. And what I say to people is that this is, if, if you try and do everything so immediate, everything will unravel. This is about taking your time. It's about learning patience. And I do hope that through lockdown, as everybody's slowed down a little bit, that you recognize that patience really is that virtue. And it's also time is something that's so important because really the only magic that you need is the magic that you're going to find inside you. And you are the magic pill to fix all of your problems, to heal your pain, to create the success. So through putting yourself first and really, really looking after yourself, rebuilding your energy, your vibe, making yourself the best possible version of yourself that you can be and having that aura around you, you're going to be magnetic and you're going to bring everybody to you that you need to make you feel like a success and to make you feel that you are living your really, really best life. And that is what I want to do in the course of this webinar is to show you how you can do that, what you can do, where you need to focus your time in order to create you as that first drop in creating that magical ripple effect outwards that's going to really, really change your life. So that might all sound well and good and you might think, oh, well, you look like you've got the perfect life. You've just told me you've got a great career and you've got a great life and you've got great friends, but why should you believe me? Well, four years ago, that really wasn't the case. It, my life was, I was at what they call rock bottom. Um, in 2013, I had to let go of a career that I loved. I ran large scale development teams, global teams building um, a very exciting time in retail as we started to build big e-commerce platforms, the one that we're, which is enabling us to stay connected in lockdown now. But that I, I built those with big teams and I loved it. I worked globally around the clock because I had teams in, in, in Europe and I had teams in America. But I also had two really small children and all I'd ever wanted to be was a mum. And there was that constant guilt that when I was at work, I wasn't with my kids. And when I was with my kids, I wasn't working. I wasn't supporting my team. I also had a husband whose career was taking off. And there was one night and I remember it so very, very clearly. I'd come rushed in, rushed to nursery, got the kids, tried to put them to bed, you know, flicking through the book, just trying not to read the book, but just get it done. Got downstairs, was trying to sort out dinner and then and then my husband walked in through the back door and the pots were spilling over and Willie came down in his nappy. He was crying because he hadn't had any attention from me. Then the dog was sick on the floor. And I just sort of looked at James and I said, I'm really sorry, you're going to have to deal with all of this because I've got to go and take a conference call with America. And I disappeared from eight o'clock till about half past 10, 11 o'clock. And I walked back into the snug and, and he looked at me and he said, this just isn't working anymore, is it? He said, shall I write your resignation letter or do you want to? So I realized that 
push come to the shove and I stopped and then in, in stopping everything left my body the adrenaline everything left and I broke down and I was exhausted and I was ill for a long time and through that time I just started to really rebuild myself and became very interested in health not only that because my mum had Alzheimer's she'd been diagnosed in 2005 but by 2013 we'd really lost her and I was starting to grieve the memory of this beautiful amazing woman that had been such a big part of my life and then 2016 was my annus horribilis, as the Queen said. And at the beginning of the year, my son there, you can see he's sat in hospital, he started to be bullied at school really badly and nastily. And um, they broke his leg. And just after that, I got the phone call. I remember coming, driving back from hospital with Tom in the car. My dad rang and my, my dad said, we've got an end of life situation, Ali. You need to come down and say goodbye to your mum. So I left my son, who was broken, and went down to say goodbye to my mum for the seven days. And that was really, really hard watching her die. And then as I picked my, oh, it still makes me feel emotional thinking about that time. And as I picked myself back up from the loss of my mum, because I lost her then for the second time, but it, that was all wrapped up in a whole load of grief because I wanted her to die because she was in such pain and all of that awful stuff. But through the course of the next few months, I started to build myself back up and carried on, you know, looking after the kids and trying to work out what I wanted to do with my life. And, and then... A few months later, my whole life completely shattered again as my marriage broke down in a way that I'd never imagined. And through that, I lost my identity as a wife. I'd already lost my identity as a career woman. I felt like I'd lost myself, my identity, and wasn't any good at being a mum because how could I let my son be bullied? I lost my friends and my support network by my marriage breaking down. Um, I lost all respect in myself and I lost respect of others. I lost my self-esteem, my self-worth. I lost trust in myself and I lost trust in absolutely every single human being who walked the planet. And in that moment, and I've highlighted it, I felt completely and utterly unlovable and a complete failure. Um, and it was through that I then lost my health and my mind. I was diagnosed with clinical depression, PTSD. I had terrible insomnia, I couldn't sleep. And as you can see here, I was terribly thin. I just had an awful eating disorder when the sight of food just made me feel sick. I just couldn't eat. So I went to the doctor and they offered me the magic pill. <laughs> they offered me drugs to feel better, to numb the pain. And I just knew that there was no point in numbing my pain because I needed to feel the pain in order to heal. So I said, thank you very much. And I went back and I worked with holistic therapists. I worked with coaches. And I work with counsellors and I lent into feeling the pain and the hurt and then started to heal. And then through healing, I was then able to rebuild myself and rebuild my life. So that's why I can talk to you about how you can change your life, because I've been at rock bottom and I've turned it around and I've come out the other way. And through everything that I learned and in my journey, it took me about 12 months. So when I say it takes time, it does take time, but you need to take the time to, to actually allow yourself to heal and actually determine how you want to create the life that you want going forward. And almost being a little bit selfish and saying, I've got one life and I want to live the best life, but what is my best life? So when I talk to you about putting your best life out there, it's putting you back in, what do you really want? So the framework that I'm going to take you through today is one that I went through, but it's also when I started to work with people, because on the back of what I've been through, I decided this is how I want to help people. I want to help people who've been where I've been. I don't want to help them get where I am now. And I started to work with clients both on private basis and also in group coaching on a group pace, group coaching basis. And I started to notice similar traits and patterns and, and problems and similar techniques and things that got people through it. And through that, I noticed that there was a framework. So I created this framework. It's my signature um, step framework. It's called the Heal Yourself Happy Methodology. And I believe it works because it takes a holistic approach. It's not just looking at one thing or one area of your life, it's looking at everything. And because it's a framework, it means that it can be applied to you, to your situation, wherever you are, whatever your problems are, you can use it and apply it to yourself. And because it's all about you, this is what makes it sustainable. There's no willpower involved here because it's all about you and knowing you and what you need. And that makes it so much easier. It's a really, really simple, clear and simple guidance framework. So you just take it step by step. And my legendary dad always said to me, he said, you know, when I was at rock bottom, and I said, dad, I've got this huge mountain to climb. I don't know. I don't know what to do. And I don't know where to take, which step to take first. And he said, Ali, he said, Ali, how do you eat an elephant? And I said, dad, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about mountains and you're talking about elephants. What are you talking about? And he said, Ali, 
you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And so I said, okay, Dan, I get you. So you just need to learn out, learn what the first bite is, take the first bite, the first step, and then just keep going. And that's what this framework does. It helps you go on that journey, that one step after the other. And you're never alone because I'm always there or there's people around me to help you as well as you move through this. And it's tried and tested. It's tried and tested by me. It's tried and tested by all of my clients and it absolutely works. So I'm going to take you through the seven areas of where you need to focus on a very high level today and get you to start thinking about these different areas. And you can get these slides. I know Carrie will, will put them out there so that you can access them. So you don't need to scribble loads of notes. But if you are going to take some notes, think about the things that resonate with you, what ideas pop into your head, what makes it applicable to you. So the first step in healing yourself happy is looking at your belly and having a happy belly. Now, a happy belly contributes to a happy mind. I believe this, I absolutely believe it. Your, your tummy is your second brain, your gut is your second brain. And what, if your belly is happy, it means that your mind is happy. They're, they are connected. Your mind and body are connected by something called the vagus nerve, which are neurotransmitters where you, both your brain and your gut talk to each other. So if your gut is under threat, then your mind is feeling under threat as well. So then you go into the stress state and you feel anxious and you feel overwhelmed. So it's so important to get your food right. But that means getting it right for you. Just because your best friend is on the Dukan diet doesn't mean to say that that is going to be the diet for you. So you need to dispel all of the dietary myths that are out there and work out what works for you by working out your own personalized nutritional plan. Not a diet, it's your own personalized nutritional plan. Work out what fuels your body and what, work out what absolutely kills you. So I know that I can't eat dairy and that's through understanding my body, but I also know that I can eat gluten and that's fine. I've worked that out. Most important thing you can do is just working out what your own toxins are. And that's usually by a process of elimination, knowing really what the high toxins are and then working out whether they are a toxin actually on your body or a stressor on your body. Just one thing to note here, gut health is so important and it's such a topic close to my heart. It's so important at the moment to look after your gut to boost your immunity but also for your mental health. And I'm not going to go into this in any great detail, but I am going to point you over to one of the fantastic webinars that's been put on by the Enterprise Collective by Polly at the Jolly Allotment. And so go and have a look at that because she talks about it in such a beautiful and fun way. So I suggest you go and watch that because it's just brilliant. And then just keep your nutritional guidelines really 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 simple and it's probably what you know anyway it's just make sure you eat a variety of color and a variety of macronutrients and what i mean by macronutrients is things like proteins carbs fibers fruits all of that don't eliminate any food group unless you've completely worked out that it is a toxin for you so eat a variety of everything a varied diet is really important because it means you get a variety of vitamins and minerals into your body that makes you feel good lots of fiber for your gut as well and then just reduce all the processed foods reduce all the fine foods and reduce all the kind of like fizzy drinks and alcohol it's common sense now notice i said reduce i didn't say eliminate i just said reduce eat more of whole foods and eat less of the processed foods crowd out the processed foods by eating whole foods such a great concept that just crowd it all out by eating lots of good healthy foods and obviously of course please make sure that you really really hydrate and then you can see here on the bottom left i oh, sorry bottom right so i'm just moving um my images so i can see but by doing this the benefits are that you're going to reduce your brain brain fog you know that kind of like dullness in your head so if you've got a happy belly you've got a happy mind just as i said you're going to gain so much energy because you're fueling your body and you're going to have that mental clarity not only that you're going to sleep better because your digestion is better and you're not waking yourself up with loads of sugary foods before bed. Also, if you're trying to lose weight, then this is really, really simple as well. You're going to lose weight or you're going to maintain your weight by keeping this high level principle. So happy belly is the starting point. Get your food right. 80% of your health comes from what you eat. It's not exercise. It's what you eat. 80% of your health comes from what you eat, both physically and mentally. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. These are the foundational pillars. So the first three pillars that I take people through are what looks after your physical health. And that is the first one, looking after your food and what you eat. The next step you can start to think about is the happy body. How do you look after your physical body? And again, this is all about you. 
understanding your body, what it needs in order to stay fit and strong and healthy. And once again, having a happy body is going to contribute to you having a really happy mind and good mental health. So there's so much research out there that talks about how you move and how good it is for your mental health. Now, I always like to say the fastest, if you've got a really busy, busy mind with lots of worries and thoughts and things going on, the fastest way out of your head is into your body is by moving your body. If you start to move, you're starting to think about your body. You're starting to think about the pain that potentially is going through in your in, in your legs if you're running but the fastest way out of your head is into your body and to start moving lots of people when they come to me is so i don't like exercise so i like to help people see exercise really is more of physical activity or just movement you know it's just about moving your body and when i talk to people who have very sedentary lifestyles in terms of the way that they work then we talk about a concept of exercise snacking just get up and move and you can move in any way also start to see the other things like playing with your kids is movement and physical activity anything that gets your heart rate up cleaning which i've been doing an awful lot of you know gardening all of those sorts of things that's still physical movement it's still getting your heart rate up and moving and embracing your body the most important thing here is doing what you love I'll say that again, it's doing what you love and love how you're doing it. It's not a chore. Exercise shouldn't ever be a chore. It should be something you love doing and seeing it as a celebration of your body. So working out what you can do and how you can do it. So at the moment, I'm waiting for a knee operation. I can't go in, obviously, with COVID going on. But it means I can't run, which is the one thing that I love to do. But it has not stopped me doing exercise at all. It's about asking yourself, how can I exercise given my situation? What do I love to do? Do I like work, working out with people or do I like working out on my own? Do I like working out? in the gym or do I like working outside in nature what do you love what did you love doing as a child and bringing that into your into your life now once again just like happy belly it's about having a variety of different types of movement so if you love running make sure that you also do stretching and yoga and if you do yoga just make sure that you also do something that's going to really bring up your heart rate do weights as well really good and really important for those of us who are entering the stage of perimenopause and menopause for osteoporosis but as I've said, know your body, know your limits. You also need to make sure that you rest and you don't get addicted to, to exercise. And that's another really important topic, but don't have time to talk about that. Um, exercise should be prioritized. So many of us just fall into that trap. If I've got to look after everybody else, I've got to do everything else. And oh no, I haven't exercised again for the day. So just make sure that if you put it in your diary, you do it. I often find that if you schedule it and you prioritize it, you'll do it. And people think, oh no, but I don't have time to do that. I don't have time because it means that I won't be able to do something else. If you exercise, you'll find that when you come out of the back of it, you've got so much mental clarity and energy that you'll finish whatever you needed to finish anyway in a shorter period of time. So once again, exercise and doing physical activity is going to help you not only with your mental stress, but it's also going to help you gain confidence and self-esteem as well. There is nothing better than seeing progress in your body as you start to get fitter, as you start to get leaner, you start to see progress. It feels so good and then you recognize how, how amazing your, your body is. If you do exercise, you'll often find that you're going to sleep better as well. And then obviously, if you're wanting to lose weight, exercise is great, but also it can help you maintain a healthy weight, but also healthy heart, healthy bones, healthy everything, really. So exercise is really important. So the next step is all about happy sleep and happy rest. It's the third pillar in the foundational pillars of looking after your physical self. And I want to read out a quote because I wrote it down. It's really, really important. How did I write, write it down? Sorry. Hang on. So sleep, again, is really important for your mind and having a happy mind. I know two nights ago, my husband didn't sleep, so neither of us got any sleep, and we were both very emotional. We had brain fog, and we couldn't think. So sleep is so critical to having a really happy mind and having that mental clarity. But also sleep, remember, is like the best and the cheapest form of medicine. So I'm just going to read this quote out for you. It says, it's from a professor in Berkeley, and he says, there is no, <clears throat> excuse me, there is no tissue within the body and no process within the brain that is not enhanced or demonstrably impaired when you don't get enough. So basically, you're going to kill yourself if you don't get enough sleep, but you can heal yourself if you get sleep. So sleep is one of the most important things that you can actually do. And if you ever see animals, if they're sick, they just take themselves off to go and sleep. This is when you recover. Sleep is so important. And we're living in, a, in an environment where I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'm so busy. I think people say, think that sleep and rest just means that you're not enjoying life. It's not true. You need sleep and rest in order to enjoy, enjoy life to its max. 
So through my programs, I help people understand how much sleep they need and how they're going to get really good quality sleep. So it's all about making a date with your bed and creating a routine that is going to maximize that for you. And the two things that come up most for me and when I talk to people are that they're going to bed with their phones. So what you really need to do is reduce your screen time for at least 90 minutes before you go to bed. And when I say screens, I mean mobile phones, tablets and laptops because they emit blue light, which may, means that your brain thinks it's the morning. So you need to, to slow that right down between 90 minutes and an hour before you go to bed. And their answer to me is that, oh, but my phone is my alarm clock. <laughs> I was like, well, buy an alarm clock and leave your phone out of the bedroom. And the big thing that I find with people who struggle to sleep and insomniacs is um, it's their busy mind that is keeping them awake. So journaling can be an amazing tool in order to help you get a really, really good quality night's sleep. And there are loads of tips and techniques that I help people with in terms of journaling. It's also really, really important to give yourself permission to rest. It's not a sign of weakness. So many people think, oh, I can't sit down and read a book or I can't read a magazine. I can't put my feet up. And I definitely used to struggle with that. But actually, sometimes when you're just doing nothing, it's the most important thing that you could be doing in that moment is just resting and allowing yourself to rest. When you rest, you then have more energy to do more. There've been loads of studies who've shown that people who've worked all day, I think it was, um, it was men who were moving bricks from one place to another that if they worked all day they moved x amount of bricks but when they were given rest throughout the day they moved almost twice as many bricks again so it's really important that you will do more if you're rested so make sure that you again schedule and prioritize your rest so make sure you schedule and prioritize your exercise and schedule and prioritize your rest as well because this also reduces your mental stress because you're not on the go all the time. Once again, it's gonna improve your mood, it's gonna improve your memory function. Sleep is so important for your memory because that's when everything's sorted out in your mind when you sleep. And also just touching on the Alzheimer's, which is obviously very dear to my heart, but through the research that they're often finding is that people who don't get enough sleep don't get this very important process that happens when we sleep called autophagy, which means that your brain is washed when you sleep and it gets rid of all of the, de the debris in amongst all of your brain. And that builds up if you don't sleep is what contributes to dementia and Alzheimer's. So really, really important that you get plenty of sleep. My mum was a terrible sleeper, so it's no surprise. Sleep also boosts your immunity. So that's really important at the moment as well. And again, for those of you who are trying to lose weight, do not underestimate the power of sleep. Sleep is so important if you need to lose weight, make sure that you do it. So that's sleep. So those are the first three foundational pillars. That's looking after your physical health. Then the fourth step is a really, really important one again. And this is all about your mind and how you can start to master your mind, how everything is won and lost in the mind and once you start to manage your mind it's how that you can manage your life so just start to understand the power of your mind and how important your self-talk is we have about 50,000 50,000 thoughts a day probably sometimes more and it's about recognizing that you are not your thoughts also recognizing that thoughts become things i love that mike dooley says you know thoughts become things so choose the good ones choose the good thoughts and the process bell which he means by that is that your thoughts here every time you're thinking every time you're talking to yourself will create some kind of feeling in your body and you'll have a feeling response to what you're thinking that feeling response then creates an emotion in your body that emotion then drives your behavior your behavior drives your actions and your actions create your reality thoughts become your reality so choose your good thoughts if you want to change your reality right now it's also really important to recognize that your brain is a vast computer and it's been programmed over the number of years that you've been alive. And if you're not happy where you are, you can reprogram the story that you're telling yourself. So thinking about what your beliefs are and how you can change the story. If you always saying to yourself, I always attract the crap guys, the ones who treat me badly. Oh, I'm always a failure. I'm always un un unsuccessful in everything I do. That is just the story that you're telling yourself. You need to decide whether you want to be the victim of your life or whether you want to be the hero or the heroine of it. And you can start to rewrite your story. You can start to change your beliefs. And when you start to change your beliefs, you start to change your world. Now, there are lots of different ways that you can get in touch with your mind and the way that the mind works. And as a meditation tutor and a mindfulness coach, that's what I help people do. It's really about learning to live peacefully in the moment. It's a learning about accepting what is and accepting the past 
It's about showing compassion to yourself. It's about showing yourself non-judgment. And by doing that, by showing yourself compassion and by showing yourself non-judgment, you can do that to everybody else. And that's the start of the ripple effect. In the first three pillars, you've started to respect yourself. You've respected your body by treating it right with the food you eat, the way that you move, the way that you sleep. Now you're gonna treat yourself right in your mind. And when you do that, you're showing others how you want to be treated too. And then that's how you treat others back. So it works both ways. Also, when we're talking about the happy mind, I touch on depression and anxiety and just talking about the fact that it is okay to not be okay, especially at this time. It's about recognizing how you're feeling. If you keep running from human feelings, pain, anguish, grief, sadness, if you keep running from them, they're gonna keep chasing you and that becomes exhausting. So this is about turning around and looking at your feelings and accepting the feeling and then trying to work out how you need to move forward. You have a choice to face the pain or you have the choice to suffer. And it's much easier to face the pain than it is to carry on suffering. So it's okay to not be okay. And if you're stuck here, then it's important that you get help in order to do that. And I'd also touch on this one about affirmations and how affirmations can change your life. This is all about changing your story. So this, again, all of this concept and happy mind about how to live mindfully and how to create this positive mindset is going to help you reduce your mental stress and also helps you become less selfish, but it also becomes less selfless too. Sorry, less selfless. It's going to help you improve your mood. Once again, it's going to help you improve your sleep and also productivity. Being mindful and just by doing one thing at a time can help you have absolute clarity of focus. And then that helps you create, be so much more productive. And in work and in business and life, that is so important. Having a happy mind and having really good mental health is also going to help boost your immunity and also help you in terms of your mental, oh, excuse me, and physical resilience. It also helps you lose weight. You can think yourself thin. It's really important. And that's the power of the affirmations. And I've also found that by meditating, you also lose your wrinkles. So there we go. If that's one reason why I do it, do it for that. Oh, I feel like I'm rattling on. I hope I'm not going too fast for everybody. And it's very strange looking at um, blank screens, but I'm just going to keep powering on. So <laughs> next one. Yay. No, thanks, Carrie. Step five. Now this Oh, this is like my favorite topic. I mean, I love all of them, but this one, this one gets me right in the gut because this is where I start to see magic happen. When people get to happy soul, they've looked after their body, they've got their minds in control and they're starting now to think about themselves. This is all about you, your happy soul. It's what brings you joy. It's about connecting with your purpose, your values and bringing you back into life. This is where I talk about authenticity and authenticity, I don't like the fact that at the moment everyone, it's almost become a bit of a buzzword, but authenticity is so, so important. It's about being authentic and genuine and you. As I said at the beginning, we'll often just go on this tidal wave of just living out the expectations of what everybody else expects of us or being who we think we should be or being like that person on Instagram or being like this person. This is about you connecting with you and through Happy Mind, you've started to do that. This is about really now in happy soul about defining your values it's about getting in touch with who you are right now because your values can change but it's about what are your values now what are your core values what are your beliefs what are your morals what are your ethics and what are you going to say yes to and what are you going to say no to it's about setting your boundaries about what you believe in life this is also so important but it's also about understanding what makes you happy what makes you happy not everybody else it's about what makes you happy it's about understanding what joy is for you. And there are so many different words to describe joy or feelings. And it's actually determining what makes you feel joy. What's your definition of joy? And really working out what that feels like for you and how you can find that. What do you need to do or bring into your life in order to feel that? In Happy Soul, I also talk about the attitude of gratitude. How important it is to bring gratitude practice into your life because it isn't joy that makes us grateful. It's being grateful for everything that brings us joy. So important that it's gratitude that brings us joy, not the other way around. It's bringing a, a light bulb onto everything that you're so grateful for. It's by having coming from a place of abundance rather than a place of lack. So it's really focusing on what you have. We also look at really focusing on how you can have courage to follow your purpose. Now, purpose, again, is another big word and people can be frightened by it because they think it's that I've got to create, you know, world peace or I've got to find the magic pill for cancer. It's not that. Your purpose is to be happy in life. Your purpose is to find what brings you joy and then live that out. And it's about having the courage to do that and what that means for you.
It's about getting yourself in the ring and enjoying life and just doing it. And then energy, vibration, love, miracles, and forgiveness. Now, if you'd gone back to me in 2013 and told me that I was going to be sitting here talking about energy, love, vibration, miracles, and forgiveness, and all that woo-woo stuff, I would have laughed at you. I would, I would, I would have said, no, that's not me. I was clinical black and white analysis. And what was all this bollocks I was talking about? But it changed my life. Understanding your energy, your vibration, and how, what you're bringing into the world is so important because that's what's going to create your ripple effect. You need to bring love into your life and live it and breathe it and bring it right into your life so that you can create that ripple effect around you because that is what's going to make you a magnet for other people. They're going to see you living in joy and loving and doing everything that they want to be a part of your life. So they're going to come and want to help you, whether that be in business, in life or whatever. So it's about creating that right energy that emanates from you. So you have to love yourself. And that's what happy soul is all about. And I don't mean that in a big headed way. This is just about loving and respecting yourself and putting yourself first. It's loving yourself enough to put yourself first so that you can then put others into your life as well and look after them in the best way possible. By loving yourself, by putting yourself into your own life, it will reduce your anxiety. If you're constantly trying to live out somebody else's life or be something else, you're gonna be putting so much pressure on yourself. So live out your life reduce your anxiety by doing that. By doing that, it's going to improve your mood. You're going to be so much more motivated to live the life because it's the life that you want. It's going to boost your self-esteem because you're confident knowing what you're doing is what you want to do. You've got one life. You have one life. So you've got to be in it and you've got to know what you want to do in it and who you are in that. And when you know that, you're resilient to everybody else because you know what you're going to say no to. God, it makes you feel like you've got an armor on because you're like, no. I'm not doing that. That's not me. That doesn't belong with me. It's not, it's not in my line with my values. It's not in line with my beliefs. No, no. And when you can say no, it's so liberating, but you can only say no when you've set your boundaries, you know what your morals, you know what your beliefs are, you know who you are. And that's where you get your self-esteem from. And by the way, if you do all of this, you'll lose weight because you're not sinking your sorrows in a bottle of wine and you're not eating the cake to fill the hole, but you might get a lot of laughter lines. So choose your poison. So that's happy soul. I could talk about happy soul again all day. When you know who you are, it's then about connecting with the people who are going to help you be who you are and you can be yourself. And it just feels so good that you can relax, relax and be yourself with people and surround yourself and be yourself and building that strong network around you of like-minded people. And that's one of the lovely things I found with the Enterprise Connected. There are so many lovely people, like-minded people in this group that you can just be yourself and everybody loves you for who you are. Everyone's trying to boost you, push you up. They're not trying to bring you down. This is about surrounding yourself with radiators and not drains. You know what I mean? I mean, the people who drain you of energy and motivation and they take all of your big dreams away from you. You want to be with radiators who say, yes, go for it. That's brilliant. You can do that. So build yourself a strong network because you now know who you are. You now know what you want to, who you want to be. And they're going to be the people who allow you to be who you want to be. It's about making real friendships that are based on trust and mutual values. Now, you know what your values are. It's so much easier to find the same people with the same values as you. It makes it so much easier. So disconnect to reconnect. And I mean this in two ways. One, disconnect with the people who are the drains and reconnect with the people who are the radiators. Do not be afraid to do a friendship cull. Do not be afraid to do it. If they're not worthy in your life, if they make you feel unworthy, if they make you question your values, they are not worth it in your life. It's okay to disconnect. It's okay to do it with dignity and calmness. It's not about doing it nasty. It's just about moving on and reconnecting with those radiators, reconnecting with the people who make you feel good about who you are. And then disconnect from the virtual world and reconnect with the real world. And I talk about that an awful lot. And then lockdown, obviously, it's been so important to make sure that we do stay connected through the virtual world. So it's making sure that you use it wisely. And I did a training on that in my private online community, but do it mindfully, do it with intention. Don't fall into the comparison trap when you're in your virtual world and don't have fake friends. This, this topic in Happy Connection is all about finding your soulmates and your Maui mates. Now your soulmate is the person that you feel connected with and you can't live without. And your Maui mates are your mates are the people that you will always have in your life and who you can always call on. And it's so important to recognize that you have them and call on them and keep them in your life because they are gonna keep you motivated to keep going on the journey that you're on. In the Happy Connections, I teach people how to communicate. And that sounds daft, doesn't it? Because we're talking all the time. 
but there are certain ways in how you communicate, not just with your voice, but in the language and your body language, and you can communicate with meaning and without confrontation. And while we're in lockdown, that is so important. This is about complimenting, not criticizing. It's about not confrontation. It's about communicating openly and hearing and listening and being compassionate to others. I also talk through here about relationships and how you can build good relationships, how you can use intimacy to create and nurture those relationships. And I also talk about betrayal. Betrayal is one of those other taboo subjects like menopause and miscarriage. Betrayal happens to 75% of all marriages or relationships and it hurts, but it's so important to talk about it and it is possible to heal broken hearts and relationships because I'm living proof that that can happen. Build yourself a strong network around you because this is just another act of showing how much you love yourself. So love yourself, honor yourself and be with the people who love you as you are. And this will help you reduce your loneliness because if you've ever felt like you've been in a room of people surrounded by people who are supposedly your friends, but then you've never ever felt so lonely, that is an awful place to be in. You need to find yourself in a room of people who love you for who you are and you can be yourself and then that you dispel the loneliness. This also then improves your sense of emotional resilience because you're now surrounded by people who want you to be good and feel good. And then that will have give you that sense of belonging. And that's one of the most important things that we can feel is that sense of belonging of community and trust. This will then also boost your self-esteem, your confidence and your resilience because you've got everybody around you who's gunning for you. I hope that makes sense. I'm so passionate about that. It's so, so important in your life for that strong resilience and, and, and health. Right, we're on to step seven. Gosh, I'm rattling through it and we're nearly there. So step seven is all about having a happy life. So it's looking at all of those six steps that we've just been through. Happy belly, happy body, happy sleep, happy mind, happy soul, happy connections and creating your prescription. You now know what you need in order to feel healthy and what you need to feel happy. And you've created this prescription. So in this step, I talk about how you can actually make that happen by using time management techniques. It's about understanding why this is important for you. It's not just enough to have willpower. You need why power. Why is this so important to you? you to live this way. This is about you defining what success looks like to you because my definition of success is probably very different to somebody else's definition of success. You can only know if you're feeling success if you know what success means to you. If saying success means like I want a big house and a big car but that doesn't float your boat, don't mean that then success isn't that to you. Success to me is being happy. So what do I need to do in order to be happy? So you define your own prescription, you define what your own success is, you determine why it's important. I show you how you can create that happen. In this area, I also then talk about money mindset and getting your finances in order. This is one area I used to bury my head in the sand about, but I can help you change that as well. And when you've got where you are sorted, you can then start to look at the future. And this is where I teach people how to dream, how to set goals with meaning and with a difference. I used to get to a point where every year I'd set the same goals and I would lose motivation after three weeks. So this is about setting goals with soul. This is about setting goals with soul and emotion and feeling because that is gonna keep you motivated to keep wanting to do it. And then as I said before, I cannot believe it, but I'm gonna tell you all about manifesting and miracles. I absolutely believe in manifesting in miracles because that's exactly what I did. For a long time, for 12 months, I lay down and I dreamt of this life that I am living now. I dreamt of it every day, I visualized it, and I turned all my fears into love and I created a miracle and I changed my life. And I teach people how that they can do the same. So by living this life, by knowing who you are, by knowing that you are living your life right now and know where you're going, you're going to reduce all of that apathy. You're going to reduce anxiety because you're no longer this car driving round and round and round and round and round about because you've got a destination. You know what you're going to say yes to, you know your turning points, you know what you're going to do. So that is going to improve all of your motivation and all of your energy. And because you've got all of that and together, you are going to boost your self-esteem, your confidence and your resilience to everything in life because you are strong because you've done the physical work, the mental work and the emotional work. Oh, right. So that is how you create your ripple effect by putting you in your life and understanding all areas of life, you are that magic pill. You found the magic within you and you can create the magic. You are that first drop that is gonna create waves around you of positivity and magnetism. And as I said, once you are that person with that vibe and that energy, you're gonna attract everybody to you that you need in order to live out your definition of success. And by going through these seven steps, you're gonna feel really empowered because you know what you're gonna be doing. 
you feel energized because exactly that you've got the tools and tips and techniques and you know where you're going so you're going to do it you're going to feel enriched because you've looked at every single area of your life and you're going to feel massively enlightened and the true sense of the word in terms of enlightened is that you've connected with yourself in terms of your spirit and when you know what your spirit is then then you know what your place is in life in the bigger picture and you know that you're going to be leaving an amazing legacy so this is all about you putting yourself in the middle you are the first drop to create that ripple effect but you have to get in touch with you first and by going through that process you can absolutely do that so at the beginning of this presentation in this webinar i talked to you about lots of different labels i'm a health coach a life coach a mom i'm a daughter i'm a wife but who am i through going through this program and going through this journey myself i know that i am someone who loves completely and utterly and deeply i am someone who heals gently i'm someone who laughs really loudly I'm someone who reads a lot. I'm someone who's often in gym kit, but I really love a great mascara and love wearing the latest fashion. I'm someone who embraces life and I accept the highs and the lows and I know that I can get through a bit. And I'm someone who's living out my personal definition of success. And to me, success is loving what you do and how you do it. Success is loving who you're with and loving who you are. So that when somebody asks you, how are you and what you do, that's what you reply. It's not a label, it's who are you? So that's who I am. So if you want to create your own ripple effect, if you want to know who you are, if you want to put you back in your life, then very simply, there are a few things that you can do and I'm just gonna read them out here, but you can start very simply by just taking the Heal Yourself Happy quiz. You can do that for free. And what that will show you is where you need to focus, which of those seven areas you need to focus on in order to help improve your life and your health and your happiness. You can join the Heal Yourself Happy Hub. That's completely and utterly free. It's my private online community and I share daily mindfulness tips and exercises and trainings just like this one. You can take this Heal Yourself Happy seven day taste series, which takes these seven steps to another level. And that is going to be in the Enterprise Collective Membership Academy. So if you're a member in there, you're gonna have access to that. Um, you can take this to a whole nother level and you can really get absolutely clear. You can go on this journey of self-discovery. You can create your prescription for living a happy life and understand where you want to go by becoming a member of or a student of the Heal Yourself Happy Academy. Now, the Heal Yourself Happy Academy usually retails for £595, but as we went into lockdown, I knew that more people needed to get hold of this. They needed to get access to it because it builds the physical resilience you need against COVID-19 and the mental and the emotional resilience to deal with everything else around it. So I reduced the price to £59.50. So that will stay and remain at £59.50 while we're in lockdown. So if you want to get that, so it's a 12 week online course that takes you through all of these steps. It's 12 weeks, but you have it for life. So if you want it or you think you might want to do it in the future, take advantage of it and do it now while it's that low. Can't believe I'm selling it that cheaply, but it's there. Or if you feel like you've got a lot of stuff that you want to deal with, if you're, if you're really hurting, if you're really in pain, if you're suffering and you need to work with me privately, then please do so. Just contact me on the email here. I only work with a very small number of um, private clients because I give them so much support as they go through their journey of healing. So please just email me. If you've got any questions at all, then you can email me there. You can follow me on my website or on my handles on both Instagram and Facebook. And then Carrie, I am done and I need a drink. <laughs> It's <laughs> over to you. Yeah, have a drink. Have you got one there? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, I felt quite emotional. I was like, <laughs> literally, I, I think some of the other girls were quite like as well. I felt quite. Oh, not really. <laughs> yeah, it was quite <laughs> emotional. I feel, and it's amazing. I think to also hear the journey that you've been on. Like, I don't. I'm a bit. I, I'm a bit of the one of these people that you describe that I don't have time for this and I'm always like I don't have time but actually I really do need to make time and all the things you were saying I was like I need time to think about me I don't have any time and I re so some of the things I really thought oh my gosh I need to actually listen so thank you so much it was absolutely brilliant I think there are a lot of questions but I do want to mention that everybody that's a member of our group is going to get access to Ali's seven day challenge uh, which will go live through our website. Ali, do you want to, have you had a drink? Do you want to just tell everybody about what that is? Yeah, of course. So the seven day taster series gives you a challenge every day for seven days based on each of the different pillars. So it comes via an email to you with a little video of me explaining high level, a little bit like I've just done just now, high level, the importance of this area of your life. So say for example, happy belly, talk to you high level about what that means, what some of the challenges you might, might be facing, some of the top tips that you can do in order to improve it, and then I give you a challenge. 
And they're really small challenges. You can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. But over a course of the week, what you're doing is that you're just looking at each of these different areas and I will give you an idea to help you to start, excuse me, to make those changes. I know that the seven, at the end of the seven days for the people who've done it, they just feel so much better. And everybody comes back to me, Carrie, just picking up on your point. I don't have time for a challenge. They've come back and they've just said, oh my God, I didn't think I had time for it. But actually I've ended up having more time for everybody else because I put me first. And it's only when you start to do that, do you see it? Because it is, it's just a change in mindset. I don't have time for me. Actually, if I put me first, I then have so much more time for everybody else. Yeah. I completely see that. I need to just do it. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I'm always the last on the pile to do anything. I don't know, I just, and I, and I now see, because I, 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 I've met you in real life, I kind of feel like you are such a happy, joyful person but it makes me happy you know spending time with you so yeah I completely I'm, I'm well into this um anyway have we got any questions at all um th this is being recorded so everybody knows it will take us a while to download it so if you've missed any bits at all like me I need to go back and watch it you will get a recording so you can watch it afterwards um and it probably hopefully go up later if not tomorrow hopefully fingers crossed so on the chat have we got any questions if you want to unmute yourself and ask Ali a question you're very welcome to do that as well just do it whenever you feel ready to um, um carrie can i jump on and just ask yeah, Ali, go for um, it. Ali, how did you get involved with um marks and spencers because i know you've been doing their monday meditation and yeah. it's been brilliant to see so excited <laughs> God, that was such, that was such, well, I suppose this is, it goes back to my point about time, you know, and everybody wants everything immediately. That was a seed that I was sown like two years ago. And one of my dear friends who I knew from something else knew that I was training to be a meditation tutor. And she happened to be driving up north. She lived in London. She said, oh, can I pop in and see you? I was like, yep, yeah, come in, come and see me. And she said, oh, I'm running um, a team meeting, you know, in September. Will you come and do a meditation for me? And Marks and Spencer said, yeah, that's fine. It's no problem. I thought she just meant her team was going to be 10 people. So <laughs> I popped down to see my best friend. And I thought, I'll just go and do a meditation for these lovely people. And my God, there was 150 people in the room. It was a <laughs> So I did a talk on mindfulness and I got them to do a meditation and in that room was like the head department of marketing and what have you. And afterwards, a couple of, one of them became my client. He rang me when we went into lockdown and he just said, oh, Al, we're in, we're in, everyone's really struggling. We've all been, you know, got to work from home. It's really difficult, really challenging times. Don't know what's going to happen. Can you come on and do a meditation? Can you do it virtually for us? Can you do it for the marketing department and all of the suppliers? There's going to be about 200 people on the call. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So I did that and then that worked really well in the marketing department and it obviously spread around the leaders in Marks and Spencers and I did more meditations for each of the different departments and then the head of PR and communications rang me and she said, can you do it live on all of our social media channels? It's about 7 million people. And I was just like, <gasps> my goal this year was to spread my awareness and help more people. And oh, I had I it, yeah. an idea that it was going to come in that package. So <laughs> when I teach people about happy life, it's about saying, you know, what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What are your goals? But let go of how that might happen. Because there was no way on earth that I could have dreamt up a lockdown and a COVID-19 in order for me to get in touch with 7 million. So it's just, that's how it happened. It was just a bolt from the blue. And I just, you know, it, sow the seed now for something that's going to happen later and just trust and believe that it will happen at the right time. So yeah. you do that every Monday? I did, I did a mini series. Specifically. Right, that's finished now. It's finished now, but now I do meditations because so many people saw me. They've come into my private community, and we do it on Monday nights in the private community every every Monday at eight. So I just do that then. Wow. that's again something I need to do meditation. I did so I did do this mindfulness meditation thing with this lady. She was brilliant, at, and it was at some home show. Sorry, this is probably going to bore everyone, but it was amazing. I and I actually found myself like going into like this other world and I thought and when she was like now everyone wake up I thought I'd have a massage it was like yeah. the most amazing thing ever um, it's about giving your mind a rest well, I talked yeah. about 50,000 thoughts a day and probably more when we're, we're juggling so much at the moment it's about how do you switch off and allow yourself to re fully relax and rest yeah. and that's yeah. another thing that I do is so meditation is great but like you say sometimes it's hard to just sit down and let go of everything so meditation is just intentional mindfulness 
So what I'm doing at the moment, again, in my private online community is showing everybody how you can do mindful activities that don't necessarily mean that you have to completely switch off and be zen. So loads of tips going on at the moment. Yesterday, I showed everybody how you could create that relaxation by just putting your legs up against a wall. Another one, peace begins with me. When the kids are screaming, just peace begins with me. Just so loads of really, really practical tips that can help you feel the same way you do as having a meditation without actually having to lie down for that length of time. So brilliant thank yeah. you i think we've got jane who wants to unmike herself but she's yeah. called maya on here hello Can you see that? hello hi okay i'll be quiet now hold on i can't Over see you i'm trying to find you hi hello yeah. hi yeah. hello um thanks i really enjoyed that firstly um a bit like you saying about sort of just taking it one step at a time and one of the first things i wanted to do was that sort of really resonated was the practice the gratitude yeah. and i listen to chris evans quite a lot on virgin radio his breakfast show because i just really love really? his take on life and his approach and i found it really helped me through i've had very similar um life experiences to yourself but not with my brother but with um my husband who's no longer with us um lost him twice and now it affects so Sometimes you just feel like in the busyness of life, you just don't know where to start. And from this morning, he said something um, that I didn't quite catch everything of it. Um, and it was about practicing gratitude. And he said, basically, when he wakes up on a morning, um, he sort of thinks of three things that he's grateful for. And I, can't, I didn't catch it all. And I thought, oh, I bet that was really helpful because that's something that I decided I wanted to grab hold of as the first step. Yeah. And I just wondered if you knew what he followed or what that might be, or if you have your own steps, or sort of like when you wake up in the morning, just something that takes 30 seconds before you heat it, your feet hit the floor, what am I going to, just something really simple that you have like a checklist of whatever that you think, right, today I'm going to try and do this, or I'm grateful for this, and just something that really gets your mind in the right set before you actually even head into the bathroom to clean your teeth, maybe. That's right. And very similar to Chris Evans. We've probably read similar kind of books. Um, one of the books, if you're really interested in it, then is uh, the book called The Magic. It's The Magic by Rhonda Byrne. It's a 30 day gratitude practice. It's a brilliant book. So every day she teaches you a different area of what to be grateful for. Now, I like to get up and the first thing you say is thank you. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for another day because you don't necessarily know if you're going to wake up or not. So it's just about being thank you for a new day. <laughs> Um, and then when you put your feet on the floor and as you walk towards the bathroom, it's about just saying, you don't need to say thank you for anything, but just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And just the act of saying thank you can help you bring that real positivity into your, your hearts and minds and your soul. So just keep saying thank you. Um, I've done meditations before where you start to say, you know, thank you for your breath in and your breath out. So thank you for life. Thank you for the people. So you might want to think about three people that have made your day or going to make your day who you're grateful for. Um, and then just being thank you. Thank, think of everything in the day or the experiences that you're grateful for. So I tend to do mine at the end of the day. So thank you for the people who made my day great. Thank you for the experiences that you know were great. Thank you for the experiences that taught me a lesson. Because I think people forget that, you know, sometimes we make mistakes, but mistakes are sometimes the most important things that we need because they've taught us something. It's not failure. The only failure is if you, if you don't see the lesson. So thank you for the experience that taught me a lesson today. But as I said, Rhonda Byrne is brilliant. So she takes you through this journey of every single day thinking about different areas of your life that you can be grateful for. So by the end of it, one of the practices that I like is just thinking tonight, I'm going to get, if I'm feeling particularly overwhelmed or unhappy or anxious, it's about, okay, I need to say thank you for absolutely everything that I want to be there in my life again tomorrow. If I don't say thank you for it and I miss it, it's gone. So it's about being grateful for absolutely everything. So not just the people and the things, but just little things that you take massively for granted. So running water, you know, electricity, my washing machine, food in the fridge, you know, everything. If I don't say thank you for it, it's not going to be there tomorrow. And that can make you come from an absolute sense of, you know, abundance because you, we are so lucky we have so much. Yes, there might be things that we li we've lost and we're grieving for or feel painful for, but shift your focus. What you focus on grows when you can focus on gratitude, when you can focus on abundance, that can make you feel much, much calmer. Thank you. So, okay, but yes. book. really good book. I'll get a book. Okay. Yeah. Has anybody else got anything that they want to ask on 
if you do just unmute yourself and then you speak i think there are questions coming through but slowly some people had to go off um i was just going to say though how to, like do you ever have like a down day me and, yeah i can't believe you do but if you do how do you get out of it like yeah i do have down days i think we, you know it would be i'm not superhuman i've had down days i've been on a corona coaster you know through i had a down day yesterday because i had a lack of sleep um but i just go back to the basic pillars you know in those down days what can i what can i control what can i do how can i feel better but sometimes it's just so important to just sit with those feelings really recognize the feeling that you're feeling and being okay with it not running from it it's just saying, you know, I'm nervous, I'm scared, I'm missing my friends, or um, I found a lump in my breast in the second week of lockdown, and that was really scary. And I had a down day, and it was about saying, you know, and I was really anxious, and it was just about sitting with that and saying, I'm going to be okay, and I'm going to go forward, and I'm going to do it. Just lots of different techniques. It's like, yeah, don't run from the negative feelings, the human feelings. Just sit with them and look at them appreciate them show yourself compassion and then ask yourself how can i move through this what's going to make me feel better how do i get there sometimes you just need to have a down day yeah yeah okay that's good i just can't believe that you would have one <laughs> <laughs> I think I I did. when i had them when i had them <laughs> Yeah. Oh, um, thank you so much, Ali. So all her information is on this screen here. And she's obviously on Instagram and everywhere. She's got all her handles there. Please go and ask her any questions if you need to. Um, but I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for the Enterprise team. You have been amazing, Ali. And we really appreciate you doing this. It's fantastic. I've learned loads. And I think the girls have too. They're all messaging on here saying it was absolutely brilliant. So thank you. Um, I think we'll close it up now. I think I think some people have started to go. So we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much, Ali. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye Jane. Thanks for asking the question as well. Thanks. Right. Okay. Um, I'm a bit scared to close it. So I might leave B. Can you close it? Everybody will start to go. Hopefully. You need to click leave and meeting for all. I know. I'm scared. Okay. Everyone's sort of just. Um, okay. I'll do it. Ready. And bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> and meeting.